In this video, we're going to be talking about if these college camps are a complete money grab. And before we get started, my name is Evan Mendoza, and I'm quite literally that baseball guy that talks development, mindset, and even recruiting. I'm here to share all of the knowledge throughout my seven years of professional baseball experience between the St. Louis Cardinals and the San Diego Padres. I also played three years at the D1 level, played at NC State University, and I'm here to share all that knowledge with you. So if you are interested in turning your player into a college prospect, make sure to check out the triple play down below in the description. So first and foremost, let's talk about the dynamics of these college camps and if they are even a money grab or not. So first things first, let's talk about NC State. This is where I played ball uh, between 2015 and 2017. So the last year that I was there, it shows you know our head coach, Elliot Avent. Uh, this is a nice close-up picture of Niner right here. Um, so that's our head coach, obviously. He gets a spot under the coaching staff. We also have uh, Chris Hart. Chris Hart, he is uh, the brains of NC State, quite literally. And he's the guy that's the recruiting co coordinator as well. He grew up in Tampa. He usually gr um, you know, grabs a couple of guys from Florida and brings them to NC State. So he's the guy that really knows the game deep um, and is more of the operational guy. He's always there hustling, always there, you know, rec recruiting, um, and he, he's, you know, the guy. Scott Foxhall, this was our pitching coach. He's actually at, I believe, at Mississippi State right now, if uh, he, he didn't move on to another school or not. But he was our pitching coach at NC State. And then we just go over to the director of player and program development, uh, Lambert, right here. All right, so you might be thinking, like, wow, this college only has three coaches. Well, that's not the case. So we had these guys called um, volunteer assistant coaches. Taylor Black was one of them. He's currently at the University of Florida. Pratt Maynard was one of the, the homies. He, he was a NC State alum. He had some time with the Dodgers organization in pro ball up to, I believe, high A. And uh, Taylor also went to the University of Kentucky. I believe he played some, uh, some pro ball as well. Uh, I'm blanking on the team, though. Um, Phillies, yeah. So... As you can tell, these guys um, who were on the staff aren't even labeled. And you might think to yourself, like, why is that? Well, these guys are volunteer assistant coaches, which means, guess what? You know, good old Niner, good old Coach Hart and Foxy all are on a salary. Well, what about this volunteer assistant? No salary, right? So they don't get paid at all. So with this mindset and with this understanding, now we kind of understand the dynamics of who the volunteer assistant coach is. Well, to be completely honest with you, the volunteer assistant, the way that he is able to make some money is through these college camps, all right? So um, first and foremost, I do want to understand or want you guys to understand that there's usually two different types of camps for these colleges. There's the fun camps for the younger kids, the, the, the middle schoolers, um, maybe the freshmen in high school. And then there's like the sophomores, juniors, and seniors who are a little bit more ready to make that leap into uh, becoming a college athlete. All right, so let's talk about what this uh, you know fun camp looks like. Well, as far as the fun camp, I've actually helped work some of the NC State ones. I wasn't able to get paid because, uh, you know, NCAA rules and whatnot. But you're truly just there kind of babysitting some of these middle school kids. Um, I remember a story in the middle of the summertime. They would take out the hose that they spray the infield with, and they'd spray all the kids, right? Because the, it's hot, it's humid, it's uh, you know something that's fun um, that they're ultimately going to remember, right? And uh, from experience, I went to a couple of these fun camps. There's nothing wrong with it. I went to the University of Miami where we actually stayed in the dorms. It was one of the most fun camps ever. They um, let us eat in the dining hall. Uh, we worked like a good eight hours each day out on the field doing exercises, drills. Like we got burnt out by, uh, it, it was just an incredibly fun camp. And then the University, uh, or sorry, the United States Naval Academy, we had a camp um, that was kind of in my backyard when I lived up in Maryland, and that was a fun camp. Um, definitely got to work out in the gym, got to experience kind of what uh, being part of the Naval Academy would be like. I remember we even did like an obstacle course in the, in the forest on, that's basically what the plebes would do during plebe summer, summer. So, you know, that was definitely fun. You'll get your work done, but it, it comes with the understanding of this should be fun. It should be fun, 1,000% fun. 
for these younger kids. Now, you're, you're a parent of a hopefully sophomore, junior, or senior, right? And you're listening to this and it's like, well, I'm being approached by these showcases, these perfect game PBRs. I'm being approached by these college coaches. They're inviting me to these camps. They're sending out so many emails. They're sending out so many pieces of mail. To be honest with you guys, it's probably not personalized. And that's, you know, number one red flag that it could potentially, these camps could fall into this category, even though your son is a uh, you know junior or senior right so it's really important that you understand which type of college camp it is right so for these so sophomores juniors and seniors that's what i like to refer to as a prospect camp these prospect camps are for these coaching staff for these universities maybe to get a last minute evaluation right so that last minute evaluation is not a money grab in my opinion. It might still be led by that volunteer assistant coach, but guess what? The assistant coaches and maybe even the head coach could be in attendance to see if they need to potentially fill a gap uh, that they didn't prepare for. So if you think about it, these coaches, their, their job requirements are to build up a lineup, build up a roster. And let's say that you know they're looking at the, 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 the depth chart and they see that they only have two outfielders. And they're like, oh snap, we need a couple more outfielders for next year. Or maybe we'll have some of our infielders transition into becoming an outfielder and whatnot. Guys, this is part of their job. So maybe they're you know on their heels a little bit. They're not necessarily totally prepared. And they want to evaluate some of the talent maybe in the local area. In my opinion, is that a money grab? Absolutely not. This is a actually a really good opportunity to not only understand who these college coaches are, get to shake their hand. Obviously, they get to know who you are as well. They get to evaluate you typically through a good, decent amount of reps. It's more practice style rather than showcase style. I've done previous videos on what showcases are. College camps definitely are a little bit more rep friendly where you get to showcase who you are as a baseball player. And I know that, you know, from my experience, I wasn't always the best showcase player, but if you, you know, watched me over a course of a couple days, you would really start to understand like my baseball IQ, my uh, instincts, my feel of the game, right? So college camps are definitely a little bit more geared towards that area. So hopefully this is a good understanding of are these college coaches um, just taking all your money and running away with it? Uh, typically not, uh, but again, these volunteer uh, assistant coaches, they don't get paid. And this is their form of getting paid throughout their entire year. And it's probably not a ton of money that they're able to generate from these camps. I do understand, you know, once in a while they'll, they'll host these camps. Um, but you have to think about it. You know, this is a, maybe a big payday for them once or twice throughout the year, right? So keep that in mind when trying to decipher on if this is a prospect camp or if it's a fun camp, right? Because if you are that serious junior and senior and you're going to a fun camp and you don't necessarily have that direction on what to do in the college recruiting process, it is not your fault. I was very confused in the recruiting process and if your player is confused or if you are even confused, that is completely normal. And that's exactly what I help out with, with turning my players inside my academy into college prospects. And if you are interested on what my triple play is all about, go down below in the description. You can either download our freebie, which is a blueprint. It's a 27 page document, literally pulling back the curtains on everything that I teach inside my academy, or you can just simply watch the video that you know talks about the triple play. So looking forward to that. And uh, hopefully this helped in the whole college recruiting process to understand if these college camps are truly just a money grab.